Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. I am Paul and we are back here with our Big Bear BBC 72 wood chipper. So if you've been following along, I did a preliminary video pretty much with this wood chipper and just had a pine tree sitting down over the hill and I needed to clean up a bunch of tree limbs and stuff with it and it really made short work of those tree limbs. I went through and cut out a bunch of tree limbs out of my oak trees that are around in my front yard. And this is one of the things that I wanted this chipper for because I have so many trees around the yard. Now, do I need a chipper this big for just doing the trees around the yard? No, not really. I've got a little Harbor Freight chipper that actually does a good job as long as you're not going up to too big of a tree limb. In fact, I just made a video on that kind of showing what you can expect with a residential chipper like that. So if you haven't seen that and you're trying to decide whether you want to go between a residential chipper and something like this that is pushing more, I'm not going to call this a commercial chipper, even though this company is called GX Commercial. There are commercial chippers out there that are much, much larger than this and you can feed just about anything into it. But this one, you're supposed to be able to chip up seven inch material with this. I haven't ran anything that big through it. I've run probably upwards of five inches or so, and it does just cut through it with no problem. But this is sold through Home Depot as a commercial chipper. But anyways, aside from that, I'll tell you what I'm doing today. I'm actually trying to clean up all these limbs that I've got out here in the yard, and I've got a few bare spots that I'm wanting to get some grass in. So what I've actually done is kind of tilled up the soil just a little bit, spread out some grass seed and fertilizer, and I'm gonna take these wood chips and just put a light, thin layer of wood chips on this to kind of have some mulch there. Now I'm not gonna put a thick layer. It's just enough to kind of hold the, the grass seed in place instead of using straw or something like that. And I think that as this stuff decomposes, it'll actually really help the soil out here because it's really shelly. There's a lot of rock in here and there's a lot of clay and it's not very good soil. So I think by adding this and letting that kind of decay as mulch, and hold moisture in there, it'll really help the grass to take root in this area. But I got this chipper to be able to handle, you know, lots of material and lots of material quickly, whereas residential or full-on residentials like the Harbor Freight one just won't handle that kind of stuff and the larger material because anything up to seven inches, I'm not gonna run that through the chipper anyways. I wanna use that as firewood. Let's get in here, I'll show you the job at hand and I'll take you along for the ride and show you how good this thing actually works. So first lesson on this machine, make sure that you have all your debris from the previous day cleared out of your end feed because if there's a chip or something in there, then your starter motor can't turn that drum in there if there's you know a piece of a stick or something because it kind of fouls up. It's simple to get loose though. There's two latches on the other side. So there's two latches on this side. But you pull the pins out. You pop the releases. And then the chute just opens up and you have access then to the drum to clear out any debris. So one thing I do like about this is it being a separate engine from the tractor. So I don't have to have the tractor running. I can pull it around with the tractor, park it where I want it. Also, I'm sitting on a pretty uneven ground here and as far as front to back then i can take the three point on the tractor and i can raise and lower the chipper in order to kind of level it out and getting the engine and the fuel tank and everything kind of sitting there level instead of it being all pitched one direction or the other so this is one thing specifically i did want with a wood chipper is a separate engine because i didn't want to be sitting here for an hour or two hours whatever you know like running those hours up on my tractor Plus, if I'm trying to use my tractor, I don't have the back of the tractor tied up with an implement. So if I'm you know, needing to, to cut firewood and I'm chipping branches as I'm cutting firewood, I can leave the chipper sit there and take a load of firewood down to the house, leave the chipper there, and it's all powered as one unit. I don't have to worry about anything having to run off the tractor or hooking, unhooking, all that kind of stuff. So for me, it's just a lot more convenient way and it, way to save hours on the tractor of it just sitting there running. So now that we've got the chipper warmed up, I'm gonna go ahead and start 
running some wood through it. You can probably see back here behind me, there's a bare spot and I'm gonna be aiming the chute towards that bare spot and I'm gonna run a few pieces through and try to kind of just spray it out over top of that. Good coating right there. You see a little bit of ground still in between the wood chips. And then there's also some leaves on there to kind of help hold some moisture. I think that'll work good. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving down the hill though, because I'm done there and the rest of it, I'm just gonna spread out, you know, around the yard as I move down through here, because the whole yard really could use a little bit of mulch stuff to it.
Well, I'm gonna have to say, I love <laughs> this chipper. Uh, you know, for homeowner slash kind of pushing commercial, uh, this is perfect for me. And you know, one of the things that that I was looking for, uh, I did want a self feed. Now this one is listed as a self feeding machine, but it's really not. It doesn't have like rollers and stuff that pull material into it and you can't adjust the speed, but the self feed basically is, you know, it's kind of gravity feed, but once it does kind of catch the knives in there, it does kind of suck it through there. Now, sometimes, you know, some of those wider branches that are, that are really wide, they'll, they'll kind of hang up a little bit, but once it gets down to the fork and it chops that fork into, then the branches will come together and just feed right on through. And you could see every once in a while, you know, I was having to reach up, like it wouldn't feed all the way and then I'd push it and then it'd suck it the rest of the way through. Now I ain't gonna lie either, you know, this thing, uh, you do have to watch whenever it pulls it through because it does feed pretty fast. But the trees that I am chipping branches on are some of the worst that it seems like that I've ever dealt with. Like it, these are pin oaks and they have them little branches and stickers and stuff that hang off there and they get tangled up and they grab you and they're, they're just really hard to deal with. Almost as, I almost dislike it as much as I dislike a locust tree. So there's locusts, you know, they got the thorns and stuff that'll grab you if you're not careful. Well, these pin oaks are just a nightmare to deal with. So, I, I mean, it'll whip you and it'll smack you. I've got smacked in the face several times. I had them, you know, kind of catch my clothes and, you know, yanking on me and stuff and, and scrape my neck and stuff. But, you know, for the ease of use of the machine, like it's still as much or more than I was expecting and is doing everything that I could ask out of it. Now I haven't chipped anything real big. All the stuff that was here in the yard was only up to about an inch and a half, but I've run out of time today or at this moment that I've got to go out. I've got an appointment to be at. The next video on this chipper will be kind of pushing more towards, you know, those bigger limits. I've got some tree limbs that have come down and some of them's big enough for firewood. So I'm going to cut off what is not good for firewood and then chip up the rest of it. And that's kind of what I was wanting to do with this. Anything that is not firewood size, instead of having piles of brush pushed over to the edge of the property, I want to chip it up. And who knows, I might even just start making a mulch pile. And, you know, that way I can go to that pile and scoop out of it and possibly use it around, you know, flower beds and that kind of stuff and kind of utilize a bunch of this tree waste that I have from the firewood. And that just makes it, you know, that much less that you have that is waste. I also can mix it up in our manure piles for our horses and make some good mulch and stuff out of it. When you mix that up, it breaks down really fast and can make some really good fertilizer and stuff for gardens and, and all that. So I may do that and who knows, I might even try to sell a little bit here and there. So like I say, we're out of time, but make sure to follow along and there's gonna be plenty of projects coming for this chipper. We're gonna keep an eye on the hours and stuff on it and see you know, how much we actually use it, see how it holds up. This is, again, something that I bought, so I'm gonna have it here for the next number of years, hopefully. Uh, it does have a five-year warranty on it, and I'm pretty sure it's a parts and labor warranty, which is outstanding, you can't beat that. So thanks for checking out the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you outdoors.